Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. So the other day I had posted on my Instagram. Well, I didn't post it. Madia posted it. Um, she's the one who runs my Instagram. To, I don't know how many times I had to say this. You'll be crying. I'm like, I didn't post this, but she posted it. You know, I left my own little commentary. Y'all now will come in with the little snarky commentary. And so I didn't know this was getting as big as it was. But there's this whole thing of people detransitioning and wanting to go back to their original gender. Um, but it seems like the mainstream media is hiding this news. So let me show y'all this here real quick. This is a lady here. Her name is Camille. Kiefer, she's 32 years old. So I'm gonna read this to you. Uh, she says she initially had healthy breasts. She had her healthy breasts removed in 2020 to align with her non-binary gender identity. She says her doctors approved her surgery after not one, but two Zoom meetings, okay? Breezing past the, a whole host of mental health issues. Now that Camille is in a better place mentally, she realizes that the surgery was a mistake. So two and a half years later, she's suing the social worker, the therapist, and the gender clinics they work for, Brave Space, Brave Space in Oregon, and Quest Center, and Integrative Health. She's seeking up to $850,000 in damages, okay? Um <clears throat> Then they go on to say, as a child, Camille never gave her gender identity a thought. But when her best friend was arred by a relative in the sixth grade, she said she became acutely aware of her femininity around that time. Her father also imparted well-meaning advice that backfired. So this is my response, child. Y'all know. I'm not. So I said this. Um, so no personal responsibility falls on her. This grown woman was 29 when she chopped off her breast. I'm sure they will dismiss her lawsuit. I'm starting to see more and more of these detransitioning stories on social media. Child, let me go back to minding my big breasted business. Good luck to him. So, you know, yikes. And so I started researching it more. I did. <laughs> I was like, let me go here. So let me dig a little bit further into this shit. Again, this person's not 15. You know, so I said, well, damn, you know, I said, let me mind my big breasted business. Um, but the more I dug into this, there's more Camille's out here. There's been a lot of ladies that they've had their boobs, like they're just chopping off healthy breasts. So they can look more like guys. And then they're coming back and saying that, you know, they're regretting it. And what I've noticed is that this is not, it's almost being suppressed in the mainstream. Most of these stories are popping up online. And even the comment section was filled. Like I learned a lot even going through my comment section. Um, there was one lady who said that her friend, you know, had de had transitioned uh, from a guy to a girl. And, you know, he's regretting it. Um, then they're saying like, I guess the fake but JJ's that they make there be there's complications and sometimes they can I, child it, it, y'all gotta go read the comment section child I don't want to get too graphic I was just shocked so my thing is this I think the rabbit hole with this situation goes a lot deeper okay now I will say this as I went and I and I looked more into her story um I can kind of I can kind of sympathize, but there also has to be some personal responsibility, right? But what really bothers me is, you know, and I don't get involved in the whole D. Wade, Gabriel Union, their nonsense. But what bothers me is you have people pushing this on young folks, right? Now, if you want to go ahead and and 
dress like a girl and you're a 15 year old boy, that is your business child. At this point, anything goes right. But I think once we start encouraging kids to physically get surgery to remove body parts, that is disturbing. Right. Because if you just decide, OK, as a teenager, I want to be non-binary and call me they, him, them, whatever these names are. Right. That's your business. At that point, you're not really hurting anybody. But once you start like, you know. Chopping things off, getting things removed, a lot of times it's the person that you are in your teens and early 20s is not who you are as you get older. And the thing that really bothers me is that you have these doctors <clears throat> and this is what they're running to. They had not one but two Zoom meetings with her. That doesn't make any sense to me. How can you agree to take off somebody's breast because they're saying that they feel like a boy and you're willing to put them under this procedure for something so detrimental. Like they should have been evaluating her for months, not after two Zoom meetings. It's insane. And I just feel like, you know, this is being pushed. And I have to ask myself, what is the financial incentive? Because see, when you follow the money trail, that's usually gonna take you down the rabbit hole. And so the more I've been researching, these surgeries, if you're trying to go from like female to male, uh, the surgery, because this is plastic surgery, it runs between a hundred to $200,000. If you're trying to go from male to female, it's about the same price, a little cheaper, depending on if you just want, you know, it chopped off and, you know, turned into a JJ, just what, it's like a whole thing. On top of that, once they get these surgeries, they have to be on hormones for the rest of their lives. So not only do you have the surgery, then you have to be on either testosterone if you're trying to be a man, or you have to be on estrogen if you're trying to be a woman. And the hormones are not cheap. Um, some people are able to get it like on Medicaid, with insurance, but it's not, like none of this stuff is cheap. So what I'm thinking is that the reason why this is being pushed so much, it's not really for people's mental health or to you know help them see their true selves. It's monetary for the pharmaceutical companies and for some of these doctor's offices, okay? I, I really believe that because there was no reason for them to do this to her after only two meetings. But on the flip side, let me say this. Um, If a doctor refuses, then they also have to worry about being called transphobic, being attacked. So it's like, it's, it's a double-edged sword. If I'm a plastic surgeon, I'm saying, well, no, I don't want to chop off your boobs, ma'am. You need to go get therapy. Then you're transphobic. You're you know not allowing me to do what I want to do. So I, I can see where it can be a double-edged sword on you know, on one side for the doctors, and I can also see where some of them are willing to do it for the money. Now, I will say this. I believe that once you get to a certain age, you have to bear some personal responsibility. If we're going to allow her to walk away with $850,000, because again, this is a form of plastic surgery, are all the girls who have gotten BBLs and tummy tucks and, and you know, botched, plastic surgery, are they not going to be able to sue and get paid? Because usually when you are going through plastic surgery, that is, you know, you're, you're signing paperwork, you're signing waivers, you know, the risk that you're taking, there's complications, you could die, you could be botched. There's literally no legal recourse, right? If you go through plastic surgery. So if they're going to allow legal recourse, for people who willingly went under the knife to chop off either their genitalia or their breast, are they gonna allow the same recourse for women or even men when they you know, are dissatisfied or botched? I mean, there's a whole TV show called Botch. The reason why people are going on to botched in hopes of getting their bodies fixed by those doctors is because they couldn't sue their original doctor. It's very hard to sue a plastic surgeon, you know, even in death. 
And think about this. Um, what's bothersome for me is that anytime a woman dies in the Dominican Republic of a BBL complication, it is worldwide news. And everybody treats it as fodder. The victim is clowned and shamed in death. Oh, that's what she gets. Bitches need to start loving themselves. All you have to do is squat. Oh, well, uh, uh, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. And this is somebody who's died, right, in the pursuit of trying to, you know, get something done that they, that, that they wanted to help their self-esteem or whatever they saw in their head, right? So when women die from these BBLs or, you know, any type of plastic surgery, they get botched like a K. Michelle or that fitness lady who had all that shit injected into her ass and they had to dig it out like yogurt and then all her ass and all them pellets and shit was, yeah, remember? Okay, nobody really has sympathy for them. So I'm confused, like, you know, like, so now are, are we supposed to, like, have, you know, an abundance of sympathy in this situation? Because, again, it's really the same thing. She went the plastic surgery route to remove her breast because she felt like she was a man. This person went the plastic surgery route to get her body done because she felt like she was shaped like a refrigerator and wanted a bad bitch shape. She doesn't like her results. She doesn't like her results, but she gets sympathy. She gets to sue. Meanwhile, this person gets shamed. Y'all get what I'm saying? So I don't know. I just, I just feel like it's a very slippery slope. You know, uh, good luck to her in her lawsuit. I don't know if it's really going to go through, if she's going to win anything. But I think, though, there has to be some type of regulation. There has to be, you know, something done. I think if we keep pushing this, Oh, well, if you feel like something, we can just automatically fix it with surgery. 10 years from now, you're going to start seeing a whole bunch of people who felt like this 10 years ago, but now they feel like this 10 years ago, and now they're all coming for class action lawsuits. So I just think like there needs to be a lot of counseling. I don't think that there should be a rush. Like there's no reason to rush um, to make permanent decisions on a young person's body like what what is the rush at 15 16 17 to change your physical you know what i'm saying when your brain your mental isn't even all the way developed yet and i'm not just saying that for like trans kids this is for you know the the flat chested 16 year old who wants breast implants wait it's okay to wait. Guess what? Guess who else was flat chested at 16? My big titty ass. I didn't have no big old boobs at 16. Imagine if I don't want to got breast implants as soon as I turned 18. Sometimes your body takes longer to develop. Sometimes you end up having kids and your boobs get big. So that's what I'm saying. You, it's okay to wait. You know, like everybody's such in a rush to change this or to grow up, you know, really fast. And I just think that you know, they need to take cases like this with this lady, Camille, and really understand that some of these people who are reaching out to these doctors and to these therapists, maybe surgery is not what they necessarily need. With her, she felt like she needed, you know, mental health therapy. You know, she needed somebody to talk to. She needed more counseling. But because of the money grab, they automatically placed her to go have surgery. And now she's removed both her healthy breasts. Um, from what I researched, I thought, well, maybe she could just get breast implants and, you know, just, oh, well, you know, start over. You know, get some breast implants. But from what I see, they really, like, they really make it super flat where it's hard to even put implants in there because you want it as flat as a man's chest. So they, they really tear up that chest area. So even if she gets implants, I don't even know if they're going to look good. And she said that she had a boyfriend and the boyfriend then left her because, because I guess she wears like a prosthetic bra, you know, like a bra and she just puts, I don't know, she stuffs it with fake boobs or something. And so when she was getting ready to be intimate with her boyfriend, she took it off and the boobs were gone and he dumped her. So, you know, so now that's messing with her mental health too. And she feels like she's going to be alone for the rest of her life. But I will say this. Maybe that person wasn't understanding, but that does not mean that you're going to be alone for the rest of your life. That just means you need to find the right person, be upfront and honest, 
You know what I'm saying? Let them know your story, what you went through, you know, how you got to that position. When you're honest with people and you let them in, you're more likely to get them to fall in love with who you are in here. And it's not going to matter about the physical. So that's what she needs to work on. If she's going into situations lying and acting like she has, you know, double D breast. And then when they're getting ready to be intimate, there's nothing there that's going to scare any man. So I think she needs to be honest and upfront and then she'll eventually attract the right person. But yeah, this whole situation is just really sad. It's, it's really, um, you know, the more I kind of looked into it and I didn't realize it was so many people coming forward and saying that they want to detransition um, because like I said, it's suppressed. And I, and, I, and I also think that that's not right either. Right. I think that they should show both sides. Imagine if they never showed the botched surgeries. Like, no, nobody would say that that's okay. You've had women who've gotten breast implants and it's gotten them sick and, you know, they've had to have it removed. you got women who've gotten lipo and they died. We've heard all of those horror stories. And then you've had other women who've gotten breast implants and they love it and it's the best thing for them and it raised their self-esteem. you got women who've gotten lipo and, you know, their body is snatched and they look good in their swimsuit. we got to be able to see both sides. But why is it when it comes to um, transition surgery, the only side they want to push is the happy transitioner? I think that's being willfully disingenuous. I think you have to show both sides so that way parents and young people can make the right decision for them. If you're thinking everything is, you know, uh, sunshine and roses and you're not aware of the complications that could arise, then you're not making that decision based on full information. You're making it based on one sided info. You're making it based on, oh, I'm watching this YouTuber and they're transitioning and everything's going good with them. And that's another thing I think that's another thing that's like kind of, um, how do I say it? That's kind of popularizing it, right? Because you have people on TikTok and YouTube and, you know, follow me as I transition into, you know, from a woman to a man and a man to a woman. And I, I think some of these people, they're not looking at it all the way through. It's more about living in the moment. I'm getting followers. I'm getting new attention. I'm getting people who are, you know, yes, girl, yes, yes. You know, I'm getting all this praise because again, in this day and age, it's not even about the money. The new currency is likes, that dopamine hit, people watching, people viewing. So a lot of people are jumping on this and they're making this whole transitioning a trend as opposed to it being a real medical procedure. And so once you go through that surgery and those likes and, and the follows and the sponsorships and the dopamine and all that stuff wears down, are you really comfortable what you see in the mirror? And I think that's how people really have to go into this. And again, um, I mean no disrespect. I have, you know, um, you know, I have all types of subscribers, right? And I have some who have transitioned and they're very satisfied and they're happy, you know what I'm saying, and bless them. Um, so this is not to disrespect anybody, but this is just me keeping it real. And I think there needs to be real conversations had because if not, we're going to see more of this. Because again, when this young woman was transitioning, she was getting all this support and yes, go ahead and, and go through with it. And now she's done it and she's realizing like, Removing my breast, it didn't make me happy. Because again, anything you do to yourself, I don't care if you're removing breasts, getting breast implants, you know, fixing your teeth, getting your nose done. At the end of the day, you can always fix the external, right? But it's all about what's in here. And if what's in here is still broken, if what's in here is still traumatized, if what's in here is still, you know, holding on to baggage and childhood trauma, you're not going to be able to enjoy the physical. So all of this and all of this has to get checked and dealt with, you know what I'm saying, before those steps should even go forward. Because I, I just think that that's a really big deal. And especially when people were describing what can happen to some of the men who get the bottom surgery, you know, and some of the things that they go through. Like, I had no idea because that's not a rabbit hole I even go down. 
but I just had no idea that it could get that bad, you know, physically, you know, infections and just all types of stuff. So that that's my only thing. The only thing I just say is that, you know, especially for my tea sippers, I just want everyone to be safe. And no matter what you choose to do with your body, just make sure that you are fully informed, you're fully aware, you understand the risk, and this is something that you really want to do. Not because it's a trend, not for followers, not because of pressure, but because it's something that you want to do. Because some of these surgeries, there's no going back. Um, I asked some people in the comment section, like, okay, well, if somebody, you know, gets their genitalia chopped off, like, how can they retransition? Like, what do they do? Like, are they able to attach another one? Like, what happens? And from what I was told, there's nothing they can do. They're kind of just stuck like that. So I just think people need to like really, 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 really understand the seriousness of it. And I really wish the media would be more honest by showing both sides. You know, if we're going to show who's the, the young girl that was, I think, Jazz or something like that. I think her name was Jazz. She was like on the TLC channel. She was trans and she was changing from a little boy to a little girl. And she ended up having some pretty serious complications. You know, and I just think that they need to show both sides. So that way people can make like really, really fair assessments, especially when it comes to children. So that is Camille's story, y'all. Um, I wanted to share that with you guys. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely tea TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely tea TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.